Hey everybody, we just picked up a forklift and we need to use it right away. Uh, it has a bad battery and I really didn't want to spend $1,800 getting a replacement battery, especially when we're going to use it just a few times here and there. Also with the batteries that they come with, you have to maintain those batteries, watering them and things like that. And that's something that I really didn't want to mess with. And so I decided to just go ahead and try and buy a um, lithium battery that uh, we can use. So here's the charger for it. And here is the battery. And it weighs a heck of a lot more than I thought, uh, but uh, I think there's room for it inside the forklift. And uh, <clears throat> I'd much rather have a lithium battery sitting around that I might be able to use for something else than a thousand pound um, lead acid battery or whatever that is. And it's something that's only useful in that application. And I really didn't want to have to maintain it. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Might save us a little bit of money for our type of use. All right. I'm going to open the uh, battery first. And the battery. It is a monster. I think most people are using this battery for things like solar panel, um, power walls, and things like that. But uh, I think, yeah, solar wind power, RV, camper, uh, power backup, um, lead acid battery replacement is what it says. Way bigger than I would have thought. It's got handles on it. So my little scale here is uh, meant for it's a male scale and it, uh, so it's limited is at 80 pounds. So uh, this battery I'm sure weighs less than 80 pounds, but I just want to give it a shot. Let's see how much it weighs. Zero that out and whew, 44 pounds, 10 ounces. Now let's open up the charger and see what's in that box. Uh, so these little connectors are like the uh, big connectors that you would see on the forklift, except a tiny fraction of the size. Looks like some hardware to mount the charger on the wall and a battery side plug. The uh, power cable. And the charger, power cable plug going to the battery. This connector is for 350 amps at 600 volts. And this connector here is for 50 amps at 600 volts. Same connectors, very different size. Well, let's go ahead and hook up battery connector.
turn these just so that uh, they don't bind up inside the filter. Manual covers. So the instructions say to plug in the Anderson connector first, then plug it into the wall, which is what we've done, and then we just have a simple charge status light. Now we wait. Dirty equipment kind of bothers me, so I'm cleaning it up a little bit. Now, out of an abundance of stupidity, I did not measure this compartment, nor did I look at the measurement on the battery because I just figured, hey, this is a temporary solution. And the forklift was, the forklift was not in the place that I was when I was making the order. So now I have a battery that is quite large and a space that is quite small. So, uh, let's see if we can make this work. Huh, that actually worked quite well. Fast pretty convenient. So, to go from here in the new battery over to here, where uh, the battery is currently plugged in, is a bit of a stretch. We might be able to do it, but I really don't want to modify anything because this is still kind of a temporary solution and I want to keep the forklift the same condition it is for a standard user. So I was thinking to myself, geez, this battery is really going to fit nicely. And then I tried to close the door. cross pieces are in the way. I've secured the battery with a don't try this at home kind of lashing, but it should be good enough for a basic test. So let's give it a try.
At this point, I also have a battery light status that still appears to be working correctly. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to have the protections that we need on a lithium battery, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that to make sure we don't run it full out of battery. <laughs> 